Welcome everybody to the NFL presidential address for week two. And we are going to take apart every single game on the board. We're going to try to keep it short. Most of these videos all year will be around 10 minutes, but as there are no buys yet, we'll probably be roughly around the 15 minute mark. I'm Lawrence Presman. I am the co-founder of Wager Talk Media, owner of the Gold Sheet, Sports Memo, and wagertalk.com. And I'll tell you one thing, we know sports betting. Let's get straight into it. Thursday night matchup, Buffalo playing Miami. And this is always a great matchup, has been for decades. Uh, way back when Jim Kelly and Dan Marino were playing against each other. Now we have Josh Allen and Tua. A uh, long story short, guys, I'm going to look to bet the under in this game. It has been bet down from 50 to 49. And uh, here are a couple of quick stats. Thursday night football games in September and October. When the total is 49 and a half, it is 15, 4 and 1 to the under. That's 79% to the under all primetime games over the last four years 59 percent to the under bills road games under sean mcdermott 61 percent to the under couple that with the fact that josh allen has an injured hand and that miami couldn't find a balanced offense furthermore we're gonna have terrible weather on thursday night take under the total of 49 49 and a half in this Thursday night matchup. Before we get into the Las Vegas-Baltimore game, I just want to make mention, I am not keeping score on the NFL presidential address. I am not looking back at the end of the week to see how I did. And the reason for that is simple. I'm not betting every play I give out on this address. I'm going through every game on the board. I'm giving you my thoughts, my leans, uh, and what I like, but I'm not betting them all. So if you guys want to keep count, put it up in the comment section, go right ahead. For me, this is about giving you information to use for your own handicap. So with that said, let's continue. Vegas and Baltimore. We're going to pass. We're going to pass on this game. And guys, we're going to pass on a lot of Baltimore Raven games. Uh, Lamar Jackson is just too inconsistent. Uh, they could be the best team in the league. They could lay an egg. We're going to pass outright on this football game chargers going into carolina la chargers minus six and a half 39 and a half is the total here and while the chargers offense looked terrible against the rangers minus dobbins he played outstanding but it was expected that they would look terrible this is a new coach a new system a new group of wide receivers and it's going to take some time furthermore the Chargers O-line, a disaster right now. With that said, they play the Panthers. They have zero pass rush, uh, and they have, well, zero anything from my perspective. If you want to get your passing game going, play the Panthers. Derek Carr looked like Tom Brady on Sunday. Uh, this conservative Saints team put up 740 points against the Panthers in week one. The only good thing for the Chargers they had a good pass rush, and they will eat young alive. I know we are overreacting here, but I cannot put bet on the Panthers. Anytime the Panthers are getting more less than seven, I'm looking to bet their opponent take the Chargers minus six and a half. Now we have New Orleans going into Dallas. New Orleans is uh, plus six and a half. The over and under in this game is 45 and a half. I like three bets in this game. I'll tell you them right off the bat. I like Dallas minus six and a half. I like the over in this game. And I like Dallas team total over 26 and a half. Everyone has been shitting on the boys all summer. Not me. I told you last week they would beat Cleveland. Ah, take that pundits. This Dallas team is for real. And they have the potential to be the best offense in all of football. And without question, they have a top 5D unit. The boys are going to average 30 points a game all year. They're going to even average more than that at home. In order for this game to go over, we need New Orleans to put up 16. They're going to do that. Uh, what we saw from Kubiak's first game as offensive coordinator is mistake-free football from Derek Carr. 
and the Saints. They utilized every facet of the field. They threw short, they threw medium, they threw long. They ran the ball in, they ran the ball out. They looked good. Take that with a grain of salt. They played Carolina. I do think we get 20 points from the Saints here. I think we get 31 at least from Dallas. Take Dallas, take the over, take Dallas team total over. Now we turn our attention to Tampa Bay, plus seven going into Detroit. A total that has been bet up from 48 to 51 in the last few hours. Now, wow, Williams, he might be a monster. Are you kidding me? How many weapons is one team allowed? This Lions team is so stacked, but they do have one problem, and that is their secondary. Cooper Cup went up on them on Sunday night, and there's no reason to think that Baker and Evans won't have a big day themselves. As of now, three-fourths of the Tampa Bay secondary is injured. Man, Goff, Amon Ra, Williams. This team could have, this Detroit offense could have a field day on Tampa Bay. Uh, But let's assume that the secondary plays. They're still going to struggle against this Lions team. Simply put, the Lions are going to average, like Dallas, around 30 points per game this year. And given that they needed OT to get to 26, I look at this as, well, they haven't gone off yet. As for Tampa Bay, I don't believe in this defense at all. I think their secondary, even if healthy, is weak. Bottom line here, I like Detroit, but I like the over even more at 51 still take over the total in this game. Indianapolis against Green Bay, outright pass. I I feel so bummed for the Green Bay Packers. Oh, man, Jordan Love looks like he's out for three to six weeks. Uh, if I had to bet on this game, I would take Green Bay, but I don't. Before we continue, I got a promo code for all of you guys. Now, I had a bad week one in NFL. I went two and three on Sunday, two and four altogether. It's fine. It's one week. We're all going to have bad weeks. I had a great week in college football for my clients, three and one and on a four and one run. And I have a 5% play up first one of the season in college football. I have a promo code to give out to you guys. And it's the same one as last week. Lots of you guys took advantage of that. Prez 100. You get $100 off of a month of my college and NFL. So for only $149, you get all my college, all my NFL for an entire month. Let's turn our attention to Cleveland uh, at Jacksonville. It was plus three for Cleveland. Now it's plus three and a half. Total here was 41 and a half. At minus three, I really like Jacksonville. Now I'm going to likely pass on this game, but I do lean towards Jacksonville minus three and a half. Now, I got a lot of slack last week for calling out Cleveland's defense, and boom, mic drop. This guy was right. I also mentioned how bad Watson is, and double boom, right again. This Cleveland team is not good. Forget about how bad Watson is. Their O-line made the Rams' O-line look like world-class. Dallas literally bought real estate in the backfield of Cleveland, and now they're going to rent it to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Browns had 54 yards of offense and one first down in the first half. They didn't complete a pass of more than five yards. I'm going to keep fading this team, and I like that they are playing against a Jags team that let a game slip away. I'm not in love with the Jags this year, but I like the spot for them. I hate Cleveland. We're going to take the Jags, minus three and a half. Now we got San Fran, minus six going into Minnesota. San Fran's the best team in football, period, end of story. You know how good the New York Jets defense is? They're one of the best defenses in all of football. Without CMC, San Fran marched up and down the field on this Jets team. Now they play Minnesota's defense, field day. And as for Minnesota's offense, Okay, look, Sam Darnold, awesome start to your career at Minnesota. Betting that you're going to have two good games in a row, that doesn't feel like a good bet to me. I look at this game and I think blowout. San Fran minus six is the play. As for Seattle playing New England, this game is an outright pass for me. And the Jets playing Tennessee, I'll tell you right off the bat, 
Had Tennessee of one against Chicago, I would have been all over the Jets in the spot. Aaron Rodgers looked okay in his first uh, game out. Sure, they lost to San Fran. Everybody is going to lose to San Fran. But the fact that Tennessee had such a dreadful loss against Chicago is going to keep me off of this game. I am passing. Now we got the New York Giants playing Washington. New York Giants have been bet down. It was plus two and a half. Now it's plus two with a few one and a halves on the board. Total here is 42. The only bright spot for Washington was Daniels running the ball. Other than that, the Commodores were horrendous. They were truly bad. They are still bad. They sailed down the line. They were easy to beat, just like Sunday morning. Get it? For all you young guys, I just laid out four Commodore songs in my analysis. Pat on the back for the prez. As for the Giants, oh my God, this team is horrible. I'm D- Danny Dimes, horrible performance. With that said, let's not overreact. The New York Giants are still playing against a rookie QB on Sunday. The New York Giants made the playoffs two years ago. The New York Giants have a great coach. The New York Giants aren't nearly as bad as they looked last week. And I think Washington might be. So I do lean on the Giants here at plus the points, but I prefer the over. Why the over? Well, when you've got two shitty teams playing against each other, I always look to play the over. And Washington's defense might end up being the worst in all of football. I think we might get this game into the 50s. Take over the total of 42. Now we turn our attention to the Rams in Arizona. Before we get into that, guys, make sure to take advantage of that promo code. Prez100. $100 off of my NFL and college football month. And again, I am not keeping track of how I do on the presidential address. The only thing that matters to me is how I do for my clients. If you want to know exactly what I'm betting, buy my place. Plus, of course, you can find my the you can look at listen to the tone of my voice. Everybody knew how much I loved Dallas last week. It was obvious. Listen to the tone and uh, read between the lines. Rams, Arizona. Well, there's a lot to like about this Rams team on both sides of the ball. If Johnson is for real, and I think he is, and Nakua comes back, this offense has weapons everywhere. They got a great wide receiver core. They got a killer running game tandem. Matt Stafford is as good as he's always been. The problem with this team, their O-line might be the worst in football. The Cards last week, they looked great for the first half, and then they had a defensive meltdown in the second half. They allowed 14 plays over 10 yards a play, which is horrible. And they were unable to stop anything in the second half. I'm leaning on the over here, guys. I got a lot more to say. If you buy my plays, there's like a full couple of paragraphs on this game. But the bottom line here is the Rams are going to get themselves some points. Arizona's going to score. Arizona's defense sucks. The Rams' defense is mediocre. 49 and a half in nice weather. We'll go with the over. Now we turn our attention to an incredible matchup. Cincinnati plus six going into Kansas City. A total of 47. And first off, screw you, Bengals. I had you as my survivor play in the Circa. Now I'm out. With that said, I'm okay with that. We move on. Cincinnati here is the play. This is an this is the overreaction line of the week. Cincinnati is a really good football team. Yeah, they made a ton of mistakes against the Pats all over the place. But are we to think the Cincinnati team is just going to lay down and die? We have seen great teams lose to bad teams every year. Three years ago, San Fran lost to Chicago. Go back and look at those teams' records at the time. What does it mean when a bad team, when a good team loses to a bad team? It means they're in a great spot to bet on the following week. I expect this to be the wise guy game of the week. I see a ton of money coming in on the Bengals as the week goes on. As for Kansas City, they played good against Baltimore. Not great. Baltimore outgained them by 99 yards. They were lucky to get the win. This team should not be laying six against any elite team in football right now. 
Is this line a reflection of how good KC is or how bad Cincinnati is? This line makes no sense. Since he has covered this number four of five times since Burroughs has been playing for them. And the only time they didn't cover this number was when Browning was their quarterback. And it was still bloody close. Take Cincy plus the six. Pittsburgh, Denver, Pittsburgh minus three. Total here, 36 and a half. We're going to bet the under. We're going to bet the under in every single Pittsburgh game. I don't care if it goes down to 31. Who's going to score in this game? I found it interesting that Peyton kept calling pass plays for Knicks. Why? I think they got close to 50 attempts in that game against Seattle. 50 attempts. They were winning that game. They were doing just fine in that game. Why are you giving your rookie quarterback in his first start close to 50 pass attempts? Bad play calling. I think we see them fix that, especially against this Pittsburgh Steeler pass rush. I find it hard to bet Pittsburgh. Even though they won last week, they didn't score one single touchdown and their offense looked shit. I find it equally hard to bet on Denver for exactly the same reasons. Bottom line here, Denver has to run the ball more. Pittsburgh will eat Knicks alive. Pittsburgh will run the ball all day long. Denver couldn't stop the run in the second half against Seattle. This is going to be a low-scoring game. Take under the total. Chicago, Houston. Chicago plus six and a half. We're going to play Houston here. Bet it right now. This will not be around by Sunday. I'll make this quick. Until the Bears do something, they are a bet against team. I know they beat the Titans, but did they really beat the Titans? Seemed like only one team played in that game. It was the Titans playing really good, and then it was the Titans playing really bad. Chicago has D issues, major D issues. They also have offensive issues. They also have coaching issues. And of course, like every year, I point out, they have pizza issues too. Chicago pizza sucks. Their offense last week made fields led Bears offense look like world beaters. Houston should have no issue putting up 30 points on this team. And there's no chance the Bears put up 20. Take Houston minus six and a half and bet this now. Monday Night Football, we don't discuss it on this show, but I do have a great bet for you guys. Thanks for watching. This is the NFL Presidential Address. I'm Lawrence Presman. Make sure to comment. Make sure to like. I forgot to mention that at the top of the video. I read all the comments and I will respond. Lots of love, everybody. We'll see you next week.